Hey there folks, and welcome to something a little different. Now, it has been a while since I've done a straight up review on the channel, but the folks at Creality got in touch and asked if I would be interested in reviewing their Helot, or Halot, X1. I guess that one depends a little on where you are in the world, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna stick to X1 for the name of the printer. Now, I figured it would be worth getting into this because as 3D printing becomes simpler and easier to get into, as wargamers, I think it makes it much easier and opens up a whole new avenue of places that you can get miniatures and scenery and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is, well, I've spent the last month sort of really thrashing the machine to get the most out of it, see what it's good at. Now to front load this review a little bit and give you the answer up front. Is it good? Yeah, actually, I've been quite impressed. There were one or two minor little niggles that I had with it, but they were mostly because I had been mucking around with it in such a way that uh, it changed the results that I was getting. The machine as it comes is actually really good at what it does. So I'm going to jump on over to Chidu Box now and show you what I mean there. So here we have the build plate in Chidu Box for the X1. Now there is also Halot Box, which is a slicer from Creality, and I've not actually given that a shot, mostly because I know Chidu Box, so I'm quite happy to carry on using that. Luckily, it also has a profile for the X1 that you can just download and get printing with, which is nice and simple. A lot of the fuss has been taken out of the process for you. Now these funky little divots that are actually set into the build plate itself, they move. And if I shift around here so we can see the side, these funky little handles twist back and forth and they push these little divots up and down, which creates gaps and then little troughs and what have you in the build plate when you're trying to remove something. Which means you can just wiggle those and pop the miniatures off the build plate once they're printed. I'll actually be able to show you that in a little bit, but for now, just an interesting thing to bear in mind. Obviously, looking at it like this doesn't tell us a huge amount about the actual capacity, though. <laughs> you can read product reviews and uh, the specifications, but it's not quite the same as seeing a miniature on there. So, so just for argument's sake, off the top of my head, here is a full 10-man squad of Valor Core from the Maker's Cult, along with their bases, and you can see I would very easily be able to cram more on. Uh, what is interesting though is that I can just hop over here and pop this to the Saturn 4 build plate and you'll see there's actually not all that much difference between the two of them. The Halot is maybe a little less deep from front to back and a tiny fraction wider but the Saturn itself they are of pretty comparable build size. Now here is another very useful example, is one of the M4A1 Shermans from Kunlen models. Uh, this is all the pre-supports and I've literally just grabbed them out of the zip file and thrown them onto the build plate, uh, hit automatically layout and bonus. <laughs> and yeah, I could go ahead and save this as a, a kit essentially, uh, print off a bunch of these. What I would recommend though is because of the way these little divots in the build plate work, you're going to be actually be better off to group a few of these so that the rafts on them are overlapping uh, because when they sort of twist back and forth to pop off it's better if there's a little bit more contact with the build plate just something to bear in mind uh, something to have a bit of a play around with too if you are going to pick one of these things up now luckily i've also got a photo of one of these that i have printed and uh, popped off the build plate now it isn't uh, primed yet i have given it a quick sand down the sides but especially if we get a close look at the the lamp cages on the front my word <laughs> this is it's a really nice print i am super impressed with how easily that came off just all around a really impressive machine now i have on the configuration here the creality suggestions and the reason being is because i had a couple of problems when i first started printing and it was largely because i was messing around with some of the print settings in a way that if you decide to use the defaults uh, as it comes you were going to get a pretty good print uh, but me being me i like to fiddle with things so it's rare that i'll actually show you my print settings but just so you've got them here they are this is what was suggested to me by the team at creality now uh, they were extremely responsive very very helpful the 1.8 second exposure time is for their gray resin. Now, obviously you might need to mess with this depending on your local conditions, temperature, brand of resin that you're using, 
but everything else has given me extremely reliable prints. Uh, very, very nice too, as you can see. And now what I'm going to show you with my handsome face hidden from view is the machine itself. Now I've just finished a print and as you can see here, pop that open, the hinge stays nice and firm. This little drip tray is a really nice feature to have as well, but I do like to pop a little bit of kitchen towel over the top just to keep mess to a minimum. This has nothing to do with the machine, it's just me being fussy. And taking a second to get it right. But once I've got that in place, all you need to do is grab hold of the build plate, which just slides straight on out. And then those little handles on the side that I mentioned earlier, they work back and forth. And it does make, I'll admit, a terrifying noise. There's this weird crunching sound, but no scraping, no fuss. Slide it back on in and away we go. I'm gonna drop those now into some IPA. And another really cool thing about the printer itself that I just have to show you is look at how it actually prints. Ordinarily, when you've got a machine, it'll be the build plate that does the moving, going up and down, coming off of the FEP screen, doing its thing. But here, it's the entire resin vat that actually does the moving and lowering. Really, really interesting. I have no idea what that does <laughs> on a mechanical level, but I've just never seen it before in a printer. So it's a neat sort of feature, which I figured was be fun to point out. Now I did mention there were a couple of tiny little niggles about the, the printer itself. Now they are tiny little complaints. Honestly, it would be nice if the power switch itself was either on the side or the front of the machine, or maybe on that funky little center console. Having to reach right around the back of the machine, it's just a fuss. You know, it doesn't actually change the printing quality in any way. It would just be nice to have it at the front. You know, tiny thing to point out there. And if they are looking for suggestions on improving the X2, that would be an easy one, I think. And as well, though it does have the ability to actually hook in a resin supply uh, through the rear of the machine, it has a resin heating function for things that are feeding into the machine, uh, it would be nice if that would be something that was just integral to the vat itself. Um, I'm lucky enough that I have a space where I can keep my printing area relatively warm. And if I were to be feeding the resin in through that system, it would be warm. It would just be nice if the vat itself were the warm part. So again, not a huge sort of issue for me. Um, if you are gonna be printing somewhere that is extremely cold, then that's something you might need to work around a little bit or look into how the resin feed system actually works. And so there's my thoughts. Is it a good machine? Yeah, actually. Uh, is it really easy to get out of the box and get printing? Yes, also true. Now, water washable resin might be something to investigate if you want to swap out some of your options, make it a little bit easier and not have to be buying IPA or other cleaners all the time. But the machine itself and the print results have been really interesting. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. I suggest that if you are just getting into 3D printing or you want a fairly easily maintained machine, yeah, it's, it's good at what it does. Uh, I have to say, pretty impressed. So thanks does go to Creality for letting me have one of these machines for the review. Uh, it is going to carry on printing a bunch of tiny wee figures <laughs> and my gray mountain is only going to expand as a result. So thanks very much for your time today, folks. Hopefully you found something there interesting and I will see you all again soon.